I like it. I like it. It's time again for another episode of Bill Monty's Guide to Getting Older. I'm your announcer, Basil Pelinor. And now, without further ado, much ado about nothing, if you ask me, here's the host of the show, the ever-expanding Bill Monty. Back alone. Thank you, Basil. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bill Monty's Guide to Getting Older. And as Basil announced, I am your host, Bill Monty. My friends, I have an announcement to make. I don't think it will take anyone by surprise. It's hot. I mean, it's really hot out there. Look, I, I mentioned before, I'm in South Florida, and it is rare you cannot get into your car nowadays without the temperature inside being somewhere around 115 degrees. I mean, it's really, I've, I've lived here a long time. Uh, most of my uh, life since I was a child has been in South Florida. It, uh, you know, I remember hot summers. People always said that. But nothing like this, not even last summer was like this. This is something just new and unfathomable. It is tough to walk outside in mid-afternoon right now for any extended period of time. I don't care, young or old. It's rough out there. And it's rougher for seniors. It's rough on our electric bills. I can tell you that. In South Florida, the electric bills are just shooting through the roof. I'm seeing posts on different uh, apps and websites of people receiving bills of anywhere from $350 to $700 for one month of electricity. That on top of rental prices that are going through the roof or HOA fees going through the roof. So it is getting rough out there to just try and get by and to live. And more important than ever, especially for seniors, to stay inside the house. And if you don't have uh, air conditioning or a way to keep cool, your house can become a literal death trap. But there is hope out there, which is why this episode is titled, Sir, There's Not Enough Power. So what do you do when Scotty makes that ominous announcement? Well, there is hope, and it comes in the form, let me find my paperwork here. It comes in the form of a program called eHeap. That's E-H-E-A-P, as in Paul. Uh, the Emergency Home Energy Assistance Program for the Elderly is a 100% federally funded program which helps eligible seniors pay energy bills in an emergency. So right now, the program, uh, previously, the program only worked in uh, two parts of the year, spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter. And I think it was $300 or $400 per season or seasons, because it's two seasons, could be used. But right now, there's $5,000 for a year that can be used by seniors to pay for or help pay for their energy costs. So this is really important information. If you are a senior who is 60 years of age or older, or you know of a senior uh, that, that falls within that category there, and they cannot pay their energy bill, their electric bill, there is a program that will pay it for them. Now, it's not just a matter of asking for help. These are government-funded programs, so of course nothing is just as easy as going, okay, could you help me, please? So let's talk first about what's included in the program. So uh, it pays energy bills if you have received a late fee or a disconnect notice. So if you got that fee you didn't pay last month, you owe us $200, or you've got that you haven't paid your bill, we're going to disconnect your power, you can contact the local agency wherever you are. I would start at the state level on the website, seeing, uh, or, or you could even do the county where you live, who handles eHeap applications in the county. And this is immediate assistance. This isn't like you, you apply and three or four weeks later, you're, you might hear something. This is your your uh, late fee, Your if your energy is, your, power is about to be cut off, uh, it will be turned back on within an hour. 
it works that fast. So it, it pays for energy. It, you can purchase blankets. Uh, I don't think we need blankets right now, but portable fans, window air conditioners. If your air conditioning unit is not working, eHeap will pay for a new unit up to the $5,000 limit. So that's going to take all your money for the year for the most part. And you're going to have to go through the whole process of getting uh, people to come out and give, give you quotes and things like that. But, you know, there is help out there. It, it's not completely hopeless. Deposits to connect or restore energy can be paid. Uh, late fees can be paid. It only pays for power cost. So if you're enrolled in some, some programs that charge you a couple of bucks, you know, 10 or $20 a month for this program or that program, it won't pay that. So if you still owe for that, you still have to come up with that money. But it will come up with everything else. So how do you qualify? Applicants must be 60 years of age or older and reside in the home where the late bill is, is, is coming to be. The energy bill does not need to be in the senior's name, but the senior will need to provide proof of residence, such as a driver's license or other identification. Now, this one's very important. If your driver's license or your state identification is not up to date and doesn't have your current address, you're going to run into problems on here. You need to have the address match the bill. Okay, so get that up and running. If you are receiving uh, TANF, T-A-N-F, which is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, SSI, or SNAP, or food stamps, then you are categorically eligible. So even if you're above the income level by a bit, because it's also an income-based program, if you are in any of those three programs, let me repeat them for you. Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or TANF, uh, I think that used to be called Welfare, actually, uh, Supplemental Social Security, SSI, or SNAP, food stamps. You must provide the proof of receiving those benefits, such as the benefit letter or award letter, in addition to documentation of total household income, but then you will be categorically eligible, which means you cannot be turned down. Now, also understand this, everybody who lives in the house needs to provide proof of residence, proof of employment, if they're not employed, they have to provide a letter of attestation saying, I don't receive any income, but I live here. If you are 50% or below of the uh, state median income, then you need to explain how you are paying for things. This is if you're not receiving SNAP or something like that. How are you paying for bills like such as food or uh, rent or things like that? That's for people who are really experiencing financial hardships. Again, the, the home energy crisis must be disconnected, delinquent, or past due. And beyond that, you receive assistance. Really important, especially right now, because come on, folks, it's, I don't care where you are in the country, it is hot right now. Uh, but the South, the Southwest, I mean, look what just happened in Maui this past week with the fires. All of this is because of, of changes that are happening to our planet. And they're not going to get better, unfortunately, because we're not doing anything to help make things better. So we're kind of just sitting back watching everything burn and go, yeah, okay, what are we going to do? Which is a little terrifying. But there is help right here. So what are you going to do? Here's your homework. If you know someone who could use this assistance, if you could use this assistance, look into eHeap. Go to your county website. Go to your state website. See where this uh, funding exists around you and then apply. And so I know sometimes it feels like there's no help, but friends, there is help out there. And I'm so happy to pass that information on. And I hope it helps you or it helps someone that you know, because I don't think a lot of people know about these type of, of funds. While you're on the website, you might look and see what else, what other programs are set up to help low-income seniors uh, and who might be needing assistance right now. All right, so that takes care of eHeap. I wanted to get that out because, uh, you know, I read an article yesterday, actually, that said there were some... I don't know if they were scientists, people that went out in Miami and took a, a thermometer, kind of like, you know, the kind that you hold in front of your forehead tells you what your temperature is. So this one is more geared towards uh, non-living temperatures. And they took it to various places to see what the temperatures were. And they took it to, if you've seen these playgrounds for kids that have rubber, you know, like the rubber ground, you know, it's not grass or cement or anything like that, 177 degrees during the day. Can you imagine a barefoot child stepping onto that? What that would be like? 
They took it to the beach in Miami, and it was 135 degrees. Your skin will blister at 110. So the sand, which is the, you know, the beach, which is the lifeline of tourism for South Florida, is too hot right now for tourists to even go on to safely. Uh, I think another one was like 150 degrees, a dashboard and a car. It was just amazing numbers. Nothing ever came in below 112 degrees. And they, they went and did the temperature on about uh, 10 to 12 different uh, things. So take care of yourselves. Make sure you're hydrating and uh, you're staying inside when you can. If you have to be outside, try and shelter as much as you can. Just take care of yourself. And we'll get through this and hopefully the cooler weather will start coming in soon, right? If there's any left to come in. We are going to take a real quick break. We will see you on the flip side. Hi, Bill Monty here, asking you to please remember to let us know what you think about what's happening with the program at BillMonty04 at gmail.com or by joining us on the Facebook page, Bill Monty's Guide to Getting Older. It's a behind-the-scenes peek at what's going on, and I'd like you to share your thoughts about what's happening. What would you like to see or hear more of or less of in our programs? We'll see if we can accommodate. We'd appreciate you listening, and we will see you on the flip side. Absolutely correct, sir. Welcome back. I would like to take a moment for a couple of shout outs, if I may. Uh, Shout out to our listener out in Arizona, Jeff. We hope that you're feeling better. I know that you had some uh, medical things going on, and I hope those have straightened out. We had a Great conversation about uh, frustrations with the insurance industry, which is another show all into itself. But hope the things have turned around and the sun is shining much brighter, but not as hot out in Arizona for you. Also, a shout out to our listener in Cuenca and uh, our listener in the United Kingdom. Both I would actually like to talk to because how did you find us? And, uh, you know, nice to know that we have such a broad reach beyond those who listen in South Florida, which I truly appreciate, and I say thank you over and over again. We have our listeners in Atlanta and Rhode Island in Houston. Uh, so just appreciate uh, all the support and ask you to please keep on listening. Uh, let me know what you think about everything, and please share with your friends and family so that we can keep the program going here. So moving on to the Uh, Music recommendation for the week. I was once again listening to my Discover Weekly on Spotify and heard a song that I shared last week on our Facebook page. And if you haven't heard the music of Lori McKenna, uh, I suggest that you take a listen. Uh, Lori McKenna is an American folk, Americana, and country music singer-songwriter. 2016, she was nominated for the Grammy Award for, uh, where is that here, Song of the Year, and won Best Country Song for co-writing the hit single Girl Crush, which was performed by Little Big Town. That's a band I'm also not familiar with. Uh, 2017, she won Best Country Song at the 59th Annual Grammy Awards for writing Humble and Kind, which was performed by and a, a nice hit for Tim McGraw. And that's the song that I put on the Facebook page. And I loved it. Uh, first time I heard it there, it's one that popped up on my Spotify list, and I thought that was great. Uh, McKenna has also, along with Lady Gaga, uh, Natalie Hemby, and Hilary Lindsay, uh, wrote the second single off the soundtrack of the film A Star Is Born, called Always Remember Us This Way. So she's got quite some accomplishments going on here. She's got a lovely voice, and I just love the way uh, her music just flows and and I I just like the whole presentation of it really nice Uh, the album that Humble and Kind was on was an album called The Bird and the Rifle this was nominated for Best Americana Album at the Grammy Awards and the single Wreck You was nominated for Best American Roots Song and Best American Roots Performance Uh, she has co-written a song with Taylor Swift that Swift put on her re-recorded album, Red. 
The song is called I Bet You Think About Me, and it featured Chris Stapleton, but uh, Swifter McKenna wrote that song. But I want to talk real quick about The Bird and the Rifle. Of the title track, Lori McKenna has stated that people think it's a sad song, or they ask why she has a gun thing going on. But I like the reasoning um, behind the whole thing. And this is, a, you know, when you find the reason why songwriters write songs, you know, we always think there's some deep thing going on. Well, why did they say this? Or what was their thinking about this? And, and all that. But the title of the record came from Haley's 21st Birthday, which was a sixth season episode of Modern Family, where two of the characters briefly debated getting matching bird and rifle tattoos. Uh, Lori McKenna noted, you never know where song ideas are going to come from. Mentioned that she was ironing with the television on in the background when the idea originated. So I recommend to you uh, The Bird and the Rifle by Lori McKenna. And songs on there that I really enjoyed were Humble and Kind, Old Men, Young Women, and We Were Cool. So please uh, give that a listen. If you visit our Facebook page right after you listen to this, you can actually find humble and kind on there or once again go to the streaming services that you like and just pull up the bird and the rifle by Lori mckenna uh, i can also tell you there's a second album called the balladeer which was a more recent album that i've listened to and also really enjoyed we don't have a book recommendation this week i wanted to kind of steal the last uh, episode the book recommendation was tied to a show called good omens 2 on uh, prime a streaming service and I thought it'd be great to start having the conversations about what people are watching uh, you know especially now with the strike the writers strike and the actors strike going on what are you finding what are you tuning into are you turning back more to uh, shows from years ago I can tell you that my wife and I actually got hooked several months back on a show called The Good Wife which I know was on the air quite a while ago and we've just become fascinated with it and there was a sequel um, uh, series called The Good Fight that we haven't even started yet because we're trying to finish The Good Wife. So I want to turn you on to a show that's on Peacock, uh, streaming service Peacock, which is for NBC, and it stars Natasha Leone. It's called Poker Face. It's a really great show. Uh, about eight episodes, I think, in the first season, maybe nine. And it's about a woman who can tell when someone is lying or not. And so she starts solving crimes. Now, she's not a cop. She's actually someone who's on the run from a gangster or a mobster uh, who's after her. And she just keeps getting involved kind of the same way that the fugitive did on the show is visited different towns. Uh, and, uh, and, and the show is, what I love about it is when it was created, they wanted to have it feel like the shows from the 70s so if you remember uh there used to be the shows on sunday night that you know is mcleod and colombo and mcmillan and wife and when you're watching poker face as the credits start to roll and the whole format of the show it looks like an episode of colombo they even use the same font for the letters of the, the names and the title of the show it's a natasha leone is really just wonderful in it with that raspy voice and and her, the look on her face, uh, her power to read people's mind, to tell when they're lying, whenever they lie, she blurts out, I don't know if she has to or just something that she does, but she blurts out, I'll say BS, but she says the full word. And uh, she, that's how she's able to start tracking down who the killer is. Now we know from the beginning who the killer is because just like Columbo, they show you the crime before she ever enters into the show. So I can't recommend it enough. Uh, tune in to Poker Face on Peacock. It's been renewed for a second season. If things ever get back to normal and they make a second season, I think that you will really, really enjoy that. And, uh, you know, let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, I want to leave you with a question, hoping to get some feedback on this. I... I saw two movies recently that got a lot of buildup over the past year, both nominated and won Academy Awards. And I have to say, while there was great things about both of them, they weren't, they weren't the cinematic experience I'm looking for these days. 
So the, the movies were the, the one that won Best Picture, uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, if I have that right. Um, which admittedly is an offbeat kind of film. And I liked parts of it. I liked the whole premise and everything. But I, I, it just didn't come together. And I thought that this was the best movie. And I was very excited to see that The Whale, starring Brendan Fraser, was on Showtime. And I watched that over the weekend. It wasn't prepared for really what a downer that film was. And yes, it, it, it redeems itself at the end. Um, and no, I didn't think it was going to be, you know, a laugh fest going into it by any means. But I expect a little more polish out of a film, you know, produced, directed by Darren Aronofsky, who I like a lot. Um, Frazier's performance was spot on. The performances all across the board. Uh, in the film are just amazing and wonderful. So nothing there. But what are you watching? What have you seen in the last year? I'm not asking you to go back in time, you know, to pull out things from the 90s or the you know the early 2000s or something. Specifically, the last year. Let me know. You know, drop us a line on, on, on Facebook, uh, on the Facebook page, or billmonte04 at gmail.com. Send me an email. I want to know what film you've seen or films that you think I'll enjoy watching that really, they didn't have to blow you away. But afterwards you thought, wow, that was that was time well spent because I haven't found a film like that in a really long time, it feels like. And I would, I, I, I'd love to have that feeling again, you know, same kind of feeling like when I, first time I saw Driving Miss Daisy, you know, that was just a wonderful film from, from start to finish, wonderful film. And, you know, I, 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 you know, it doesn't have to be that type or that, you know, kind of a character piece or something like that. But just let me know what, what you've seen, what's really blown you away. If it's an action film, I'd love to know about that. If it's a musical, I don't know if there's any musicals out there, uh, let me know about that. But something to pass the time when, uh, when I get a chance to watch films. Okay, so that's your assignment. That's your homework. Please let me know about that. And we are coming to the end of uh, this episode episode seven wow how did we get to seven so fast sir there's not enough power i hope that you learned something that can help you out especially if you're a senior and you uh you need some help with your electric bills and just remember eheap is the way to go check out Lori mckenna and her wonderful music check out poker face starring natasha leone and i leave you with this thought Nobody grows old merely by living a number of years. We grow old by deserting our ideals. Years may wrinkle the skin, but to give up enthusiasm wrinkles the soul. Stay enthusiastic. And remember always, my friends, be kind. Go out and do a good deed. Take care of yourselves. I can't wait until we speak to you again and we see you on the flip side. Bye-bye!